trading update season from retailers. And interestingly enough, when Woolworths brought its trading update out a week ago, the share prices remained steady. Now, usually that's not anything to celebrate. But given that ShopRite has dropped 20 rand a share from 190 to 170 rand, and Truworths has dropped 10% itself in a day or so uh, after their trading updates have come out, it does tell you something about uh, the market's um, delight, uh, relatively speaking, with the Woolworths trading update. In studio with us is Ian Moore, who's the chief executive of Woolworths Holdings. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? Just, just go back into the difference between the two, because the trading updates don't give too much detail about the underlying results, yet yours was welcomed and your competitors not. Yeah, look, Alec, I think ours was to expectation, and I think that's the importance of it. Um, you know, Trueworths um, and ShopRite, they're very good businesses that have a long history of performing and a long history of not surprising the market. Now, I think particularly yesterday, the market got a bit of a surprise with the Trueworths result. Whether it should have gone down by as much as it has is, you know, a question that someone else can answer. But I think with us, we we keep on delivering what we're saying we're going to deliver. No surprise to the marketplace, and I think also it's a good result in a dif difficult environment generally. You've got also a, a lot of stability in your management team. I was just reading your annual report last night. Simon Sussman, your chairman, yeah. uh, has been with the group for 30 years. Exec well, non-executive chairman. Now you've been since. Uh, uh, well, in, since the 90s, you've been running Country Road or been involved in Country Road in Australia and, of yeah. course, come over here. Yeah, look, I, I think uh, any good business is only as good as the people that it has in its senior team and throughout the business. And we're very fortunate. We've got a great and stable senior management team. I, I was watching um, one of your competitor programs the other day. and we you were just, weren't. I was. I, I've got to admit, <laughs> Alec, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just like you said you shop at Pick and Pay, I watch other programs. I don't shop at Pick and Pay. <laughs> I shop at Willie's. <laughs> and um, they described the management team as world class. Um, they described actually both ourselves and ShopRite as a world class management team. And I think that's what we've got. We've got great guys, great experience, been around a long time, complementary skills makes a big difference. Mm. The one thing that, that would uh, worry us looking forward is you've had an unbelievable run. 34% return to shareholders in the last decade per annum. Mm. Now, the latest uh, trading update says you're going to produce somewhere between 25 and 30% on headline earnings for the most recent financial year. The year before, you were around 25%. It already shows us that that 34 is perhaps uh, a little out of reach now. Look, I think we keep, you know, trying to get a, another great result on a great result on a great result. It's hard, um, but you're only as good as your next result. Any business knows that. And we've got a lot to do. We have got a lot of plans in place. We're very clear on how we're going to grow the business. Business is performing. We're taking market share. Um, and I think we can continue to do so. Um, the whole team is very focused on taking advantage of where we are in the market relative to others. Our consumer is in a stronger position. Our competition, our main competitors are in turnaround situations. And when you're in that situation, you've got to take advantage, we'll continue to do so. So I don't think we're ex-growth either top line or, or bottom line. Um, certainly our business, not just in South Africa, also in Australia, performing exceptionally well. Let's get into some of the comments that were made about South Africa. Your chairman was quite outspoken about his uh, concerns of the growing gap, as he calls it, between business and the increasingly vocal and more populist political thinking in this country. Is this uh, something that would translate into decisions that you make at a business level? So I'd like Simon to be controversial, <laughs> isn't it? Um, look, I, I, Simon, is a, Simon is a great chairman. Um, he understands the Woolies business, the Woolies brand. He understands the, the South African marketplace and the politics of, of South Africa exceptionally well. So to be able to have that experience, um, have access to that experience, it makes a great difference for our business. So of course, in making the decisions we make, we're cognizant of what's going on around us, what the views are, and you know what? It's always better to, to listen to the wise heads that are around the table. And you know, we've got an exceptional board, uh, you know, both internationally and locally. So yes, of, of course, you know, their, their views, their opinions, their thoughts are very much uh, used to inform every decision the business makes. Mm. You talk about that board, you've brought in uh, top executives from Marks and & Spencer and Tesco to serve on your board here. 
But where I'm going with this is Africa. The rest of the world mm. talks about our continent uh, and their mouths salivate. You've got 51 stores outside of South Africa on the continent. Is this becoming more of a priority? Yeah, it is more of a priority. I actually, two weeks ago, um, I visited six of the African markets, um, and I think there's real potential for us. We, we're not doing a good enough job in Africa, and I think we can um, kick our Africa um, sales up a good notch just by doing um, better than we are currently. You know, our flow of goods isn't good enough, profiling of the store, understanding of the customer, um, and giving it more of a priority within the business. Um, so by doing those things, we can grow our Africa business. But I also see the opportunity to open more stores, to build our market further, to invest in that now for the future. Some markets very profitable now, some markets not so, but will be so in the future. So very much it's on our agenda to make it a greater priority to drive Africa harder. But at the end of the day, it will only be 10% to 15% of our business in time to come. Um, What's time to come? I would say three years, Alex, mm. three to five years. Because I look at West Africa, uh, which is far more populous than where you are uh, concentrated, and you only have two stores in Nigeria and one in Ghana. Yeah, look, Nigeria is very difficult. Um, you cannot, you cannot do business in the in Nigeria easily. Um, there is no formalisation of shopping, so there's only a couple of shopping malls. Most of it is informal. Um, to get anywhere in Nigeria takes an inordinately long time. The rental costs are expensive, labour costs are high, and it's Northern Hemisphere, not Southern Hemisphere. So it is not without its difficulties. And we are not a known brand, and the Nigerians tend to go north um, because of the Hemisphere issue, shop in the UK, they know those UK brands. So it's going to take us time to establish our brand, get the awareness out there, um, get people to understand we're not woolies from um, mm. the UK. Mm. Um, but it takes time, and do you know what? Sometimes you have to invest in the now for the long-term future. Nothing in Kenya yet seven uh, stores in Tanzania. No, we've got in Kenya. you got in Kenya. Yeah, have you opened we, since the... We have 12 stores in uh, Kenya. Kenya's a very good market for us. Um, spent a bit of time um, in the Kenyan market just two weeks ago. Um, we're opening, I think, four more stores in the next um, year and a half. I, I need to get new glasses because I didn't see that in the annual report. No, but also strong in terms of our annual <laughs> report, not with you, Alec. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good market. Mm. But you've really done well in Australia, where you spent a lot of time. Yeah, our, our results in, in Australia are, are very good indeed. We're, we're very pleased with them. I'm very proud of the, the team that's there. Um, the new chief executive, I think, has he's combined the new businesses. That acquisition we made worked out very well for us. We got it at a great price. Where does it, where does it put you now in the Oz market with it, witchery and, and your Yeah, it, it's, it's, um, we're about 700 million, so we're the second largest specialty apparel business. It'll be a billion dollar business in, within two years, um, trading exceptionally well, all cylinders firing, integration going well, um, online going very well for us in, in Australia. So very happy, and with the Australian dollar where it is, it's been a nice round hedge. Why, do, why is it that, or what did you do differently? We've seen so many South African businesses try in Australia and come back with their tail between the legs. Yeah, a few have worked and a few have, a few have failed, um, Alec. I think the difference is that Simon and the board, when I was there, let me run that business. Um, and the management team we had particularly on the design side, really understood that market. They understood the market, they understood the customer, they understood the brand very well. It took us a fair old while to turn it around because it was, it was in a pretty bad shape, but we turned it around. It's now a valuable asset for the Woolworths business. But I think it's all about understanding that if you make an investment um, and you invest in a different market, you can't force your standards, your principles, um, and your way of doing business on a different business. So you didn't re relocate a bunch of South Africans who wanted to you emigrate? You can't do that. Mm. You can't do that. And similarly in your they, Africa... They've, they've allowed me to come here, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> the other way around. And the similar with your strategy into other parts of Africa. Will you be bringing in locals? We, wherever we can, we do. Um, and I think in, in operating... They're all very different markets. You know that better than I do. Um, so you need to understand that local market, operate as a local within that market, and that means not shoving in, um, you know, South Africans or Australians, whoever it may be. 
Um, we want to own those businesses, control those businesses. We don't want franchise operations in those marketplaces, um, but we also want to recognize they are different and they should be run differently and they have different requirements.